Hi there, my name is Sandy Alnock. I'm an artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to show you how to pre-color stamped images with Tombow dual brush pens. I've showed a technique similar to this in the past. I'll link you to a video at the end where I did something like this, but I'm gonna be using this Inky Antics stamp set, which has bunnies as well as an envelope little thing that you can put on there that says two. And I've got my watercolor paper inside my Misty and my stamps are all arranged so I can do a big background with all of the images because I like to color all the images. That's how I roll. And I have my Tombow dual brush pens. These are markers that are water-based and I do have the full set. They come, if you buy them in the full set, they come in that big square case. And for those who have the big square case, I've actually put cardstock in a strip around it to hold it closed. If you know what I mean, if you have that thing, then you'll know why that's important. <laughs> so that the thing doesn't fall apart when you pick it up. Anyway. I chose four colors and I will link those in the doobly doo down below. But four colors, purple, blue, and a red and um, kind of a red violet color. And I just randomly scribbled colors onto one of the bunnies. I started out the first time I tried this doing all the bunnies at once. And that's why they're all pink because these markers do stain your clear stamps, but they don't stain them permanently. I mean, they look like they're stained permanently, but they don't affect the stamping, shall I say. So I decided that when I actually filmed this that I would do them one at a time instead because it's a lot easier to do that way. With the Misty, you can stamp it a couple times if you don't get enough ink in there, enough of the color. But what I found was that I, I didn't really need to do it multiple times very often. As long as you get the marker on there, you don't let it dry. If you do dry it, if you know the doorbell rings or something, you can always go back to it and huff on it with your breath and that will reactivate the ink so that you can stamp with it. So I'm taking a number four silver brush uh, from the black velvet line and painting in some of the shadow areas. These will be white bunnies, but they'll be kind of these pretty rainbow colors. I thought it might be fun for an Easter season type of card, but this actually works all year round. And you'll see as we get to the end of this and just paint a little water in there to create some shadows. Now I'm going to speed up because it's really the same process for all of them and it doesn't even matter if you get the shading correct as far as science is concerned. Just put some color in there and let it be kind of loose. Don't stress out about it. Coloring is supposed to be relaxing so relax into it and color around the edges. And you can give them more color. You can actually make them in browns and make them realistic looking bunnies. Well, I guess you can make them realistic bunnies, but you can do them in realistic colors. A lot of different ways you can use these. And of course you can use not all of them on one card like I did. But since I like to color all the images, this would be a big background image. So for each one, I just scribble on some color in different combinations of the four colors that I chose. So they all kind of go together, but not like they're all gonna be exactly the same. They'll be a little bit different. And my original vision for this is not how it came out in the long run. And I'm excited when things like that happen, when I discover something along the way and like, hmm, kind of like what happened there. So let me try this. And that will happen later on as I get to the finishing stage of the card. Because out of all of these images, there's going to be one that I wanted to have be my focal image but they all came out so cute. I decided they would all be my focal image because they're adorable. And this was the guy, this little one on the right-hand side was the one that was gonna be my main one and he was gonna be looking at the sentiment. And so I wanted to put more focus on him and around that, that thought bubble where I'm gonna stamp the sentiment inside after I'm done. And that was going to be the, the main thing. The rest of them were just gonna be bunnies jumping and flying around the back in the background. And they are really cute. I love the style of these bunnies from Inky Antics. They're just adorable little guys. And they're facing all different directions. There's some jumping down, some jumping up. They're you know doing handstands. Um, you can turn them the opposite way and they'd be jumping up into the air rather than jumping down. There's enormous variety of different ways you can do it. That little bunny laying on his back, you could put something on top of him so he can be like, Holding another bunny, you could do a whole stack of them balancing in the air on top of each other, which would be quite hilarious. And there's just a lot of different playful scenes that you can make out of all of these bunnies. So I'm just about finished with the painting on these. And you can see how 
the same four markers gave me a little variety. Some of them are more bluish, some of them are more uh, blue purple, some of them are more reddish purple. Here's where my original vision had me taking my little mini Versafine ink and start stamping just those two images. I wanted to feature just those, that one little bunny and the sentiment in the thought bubble. And I loved how it came out and what it looked like on top of it that I inked everything else up. <laughs> I put it on all of them and then stamped in the sentiment. Next, I put some color on a block so I could do shadows underneath of them. And with shadows, don't let them intimidate you because they can be really simple and just put a little tiny bit of color that's enough to anchor them. With some of the bunnies, like this one's jumping in the air, so put the ground down below him. And this one is laying directly on the ground, so the shadow should actually be touching him. This little guy doing handstand, it should just be on the hand. Don't let it go up too high, so he looks like he's actually standing on one hand. And I'm mixing blues and purples from that block to spread onto my images. So here's the finished card, which I think is adorable. I hope you like it too, and it might be a technique you'd try sometime because it was a lot of fun. And I want to leave you with a few other videos. Another one that I told you about that I had achieved that same kind of a look with the Tombow markers. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. And I will talk to you guys later. Have an awesome, awesome day. Bye-bye.